Hello and welcome to my brand new series. Um, we'll see how this goes, but I, uh, the thing I, one thing I love to do is write little programming languages, uh, especially write interpreters. I'd love to write a compiler, but I don't really know how they work. Um, but I love writing interpreters. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is write a language that's a bit like Rust in Rust, just because I love writing Rust. I love writing uh, programming languages. Uh, I don't necessarily know how to do it, but I've, you know, I've done it a few times and I've muddled my way through. Um, so, uh, we're going to try and write a little, little Rust like language in Rust, um, that it maybe is useless. Maybe it's just for fun, or maybe it's going to be something that combines some of the advantages of Python with Rust. So, um, like you don't, you don't need to, compile it i don't know what's useful about what what do i like about python i really like um, how immediate it is um uh but what i really like about rust is that you have types and things that make things feel safe and easy and nice um but yeah so uh, at least for the beginning this isn't going to be anything useful it's just going to be um playing around with uh figuring out how you get a language like rust to parse and um, run um, and then maybe one day it'll be something useful um, so I haven't got much so far what I've got is a name the name is milk uh, the name is inspired by the milk snake because obviously a python is a snake uh, but the milk snake is rust colored so it's like a rust colored snake right so we're going to call it milk I mean you've got to call it something so yeah um I'm looking forward to this. I have no idea how it's going to go. I haven't practiced this beforehand, which I kind of planned to do before I thought about doing this series. Um, but I couldn't sleep tonight. I just thought, let's, let's start the new series. Let's see how it goes. So, uh, we're going to start off by trying to implement, um, a bit of Alexa for milk. So Alexa is the thing that takes, um, text and turns it into a stream of characters, um, sorry, a stream of tokens, takes a stream of characters, turns it into a stream of tokens, where tokens are like chunks of a programming language that um, that you might recognize, like an open bracket, or a keyword like let, or a variable name like a, or something like that. So um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, well, let's just get started. So I'm, I'm going to do everything as I, I usually do. Um, test driven. So... Let's write some tests. Maybe just one. So I'm thinking we're going to have... Well, actually, I'm thinking it, all this is going to happen inside a, 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 a module called Lexa, which we're eventually going to move into another file. But for now, we'll do it all in here. So the Lexa module is going to have its own tests. And the tests are going to look something like... Well, what's the first thing we want to be able to parse? How about an integer? So, um, let's just parse an integer. So let's parse. So at the parsing phase in Rust, you know it's an integer, but you don't know what type of integer it is, like 64-bit or whatever. Like, I mean, there's a way of specifying in Rust that that you, you want to say exactly what type it is. But if you don't specify it, it figures it out from the context. So that's going to be interesting to figure out. But what that means is that for now, this is just going to... It's not... This is going to be lexing an int. Um, it's just going to tell us, I've got something that looks like an integer type, and it's not going to tell us um, exactly how big it is yet. Um, so when, you just, when it's just reading the text of your program, um, it comes across... Something that looks like an integer, it's just going to say, this is an integer. So, you're gonna, it, lexing is going to look something like, we're going to call a function called lex. We're going to give it something, maybe a string. We'll, we'll figure that out. So, when we give it a three, then that is going to lex into um, a token. So it's going to be, there's going to, we're going to have some kind of structure or whatever, something called a token. 
uh, which let's just say it's going to be an, we're going to have a thing called an int token. We'll make this up in a second. And uh, an int token is going to actually hold on to the the digits of that number it's as a string is how, what I'm expecting will happen. We'll see whether I'm right about that. All of this might be completely wrong. So let's first of all make our test um, compile but fail. This is fun, isn't it? Now, I also want to make sure that this is going to work outside of the testing context. So it's going to take in some input. I think in the input is going to be of type read. Uh, and it's going to return. Um, well, it's going to return an, I think eventually it's going to return an iterator, iterator of, with an item of type token. Right? So you give it something you can read, which is like, you know, like a string like thing, something, uh, you know, or like a stream of input from your, from somewhere. And it's going to give you back uh, something you can iterate through. And each time you ask for the next thing, it's going to give you back a token. And what I want to do is try and get main to look right as well. So main is going to do something along the lines of get hold of standard input. So that's going to be use std. IO, I think it's called stood in. Yeah. So now we're going to say lex standard input, basically. Like so. And then print out the answer. So that's going to be, I guess we're going to loop through. Because it's giving it, it's returning an iterator. And we'll print each token. Maybe debug print each token for the moment. Like so. And in order to do that, we're going to need to use Lex. We're going to need to be able to access Lex from Lexa. Now that's, it's not like doing that because it's not public. Maybe we're going to. We're going to bring in Lex with an import, and here we're going to use std io read. And I don't think a str is a std io read, so that's immediately a problem. Um, or oh, this should be impl read. Yeah, so the Lex function uh, can deal with anything that you can read from, and it'll give you back something that is an implementation of an iterator. Uh, now it's not, it's not, it's not returning anything yet, so it's complaining about that. Um, and it's complaining about how there isn't a thing called a token, so I guess we better make a thing called a token. Uh, what's it going to be? Is it going to be a struct or an enum or? It's probably going to be an enum. Um, like so. And. How close are we to, right? Well, token needs to implement debug. Um, so we can print it out. And we're going to need to be able to access the lex function. I kind of want to do super, I feel like often, but some people don't like this, but often I feel like my tests should just have access to everything in the module that they're inside. And yeah, now our problem is that a str is not actually a read, but I think if we two bytes it, as bytes it. No, that's no good. Is that good? Yeah, that is good. Okay. So it's going to read UTF-8 bytes. Um, so we'll have to deal with what if it's not valid UTF-8. Because obviously stuff coming in from standard in might not be valid UTF-8. And now we don't have a, this constructor for a token yet. So let's provide... Um, some kind of constructor methods for token, um, which is going to take in, for now, it's just going to take in, uh, what do we call this, Liter literal? Let's call it literal for now. That might, I might 
um, might not like that. And for now, we're just going to return it. Well, I guess we need a variant of token. We need at least one variant of token. So uh, it's going to be this, but we're going to take ownership of or create a string that we own. So that means token needs a variant called int, which owns a string. And that should have, that should be a capital. Like so. So, um, okay. This obviously, we need to collect the answer from Lex into some kind of vec or something. So, let tokens equal this collected into a vector. So, we'll just say the type of it. We might want to write some utility functions to make this a bit easier. But And now we've got a vec, so we need to be able to compare that. Tokens. So we're going to compare that with like an array of token, maybe. Maybe a slice of token if that doesn't work. Um, and that should be, we should be collecting this to get that. All right, so you can't, all right, so we can't compare tokens. So we better make that derive partial eek. So hopefully that'll mean it lets us check that they're equal. Yeah, that seems to work. All right, so we need, look, we've got almost a program. We've got to implement Lex. All right, so we can make our first test pass the dumbest possible way by returning, we've got to return an iterator. Um, so I wish we had a yield keyword, I really do. Um, but I guess we can make ourselves a vec and then call into iter on it. Yeah, so let's make our test fail before we make it pass. All right, so we've got various warnings. I think we're gonna ignore the warnings for now and see if our tests pass. So our test fail. We we're expecting to pass to um, lex that, that string 32 and produce an integer string 32. In fact, I think my first test I want to do is just gonna be the number three, not 32. Oh, look, I, yeah, I kind of obviously meant that and then did it wrong there. Okay, so our test fails but we can make it pass by being really dumb, like this. We'll hard code, even well, even hard code this way. We push ourselves to implement things correctly gradually, or we push ourselves to test things correctly gradually as we go. All right, so we have a passing test um, that, that shows that we can lex the number three and just the number three. So let's try lexing a different number, and that will force us to. Um, uh, implement this a bit more properly. So can I, can I make this nicer? What if I had a utility function that did this as bytes collect business? So let's have a little utility function called, um, uh, lex, uh, lex to or just lex. How about just lex? No, well then it's going to clash because we because we're importing superstar. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Um, how about just lex v? I mean, it's only a local function. It's probably okay to call it that. So we're going to give it a string, and it's going to return a vec of token. So it's nice and simple for our test, and it does all the heavy lifting of this stuff. So. It is going to call Lex, pass in our input. Um, turn it into bytes so it can be passed into Lex as a read. And then uh, call collect on it. Once we've got tokens, I guess we can just return it. So actually, yeah, it saves us having to declare the type because the type's already declared in the function signature. It's all nice. So now we can assert that. Uh, this Lexi function of three 
gives us a token um, a list of tokens of length one, which is a three. Do we still pass our test? Yes, we do. Okay. So now we've got this. We can um, let's just say lex uh, single character int, and let's try lexing a four. It should fail. Now, normally, I'd say these should be separate tests, right? I'm really into separate tests, but these are actually both testing the same thing. It's just that I need them to, I need two, two of them to force me to implement this properly. So I've, I think it's okay to put them together. So we're going to say anything we're lexing um, <clears throat> is going to, um, is going to, become be, be understood as an int now we've got this read thing what can you do to a read uh, we should be able to call a method on that but it's not auto completing for me what does read do um Oh, it's so you can read into a buffer. So, okay, we first thing we want to do is so, somehow wrap this in like a buffered reader of some kind, I think. <clears throat> Maybe I want, yeah, let's wrap it in a buffered reader. Then we can do more interesting stuff to it. So, I think what we want is buff reader. Yeah. We just wrap our input in a buff reader, and now we can do nice stuff with it, right? So I'm not getting any methods on this. Oh, okay, it's just fine. So we could take the first, and we don't want to just iterate over its bytes. I guess we want to read to read to string gives us a string which might be useful and read to end gives us all the bytes. So will this read to string will crash if this is not ETF eight? Yeah, or it will return an error, I guess, which is fine by us. And briefly we'll unwrap and then we'll do something cleverer. What does read exact do? Exact number of bytes required to fill up. All right, so if we read to a string, um, then we can. Now I'm just thinking. I'm thinking ahead, and I've made token int take in a um, a str, I and mean, we've actually got a string, which is a little annoying. So I think I'm going to change token int to take in a string. Um, and then deal with it in my tests so that at least the interface kind of makes sense. Uh, this should be just read to string, right? Um, so token, if we make token int take in a string, then we don't need a two owned here. And then we're going to have to deal with change the way our tests create one. Yeah. Uh, but this was quite nice for our tests, wasn't it? Uh, are we going to need another little helper function? Or, or what we could do is make, is not use a constructor in our real code, but just use that. All right, hang on. We're not, all right. Well, first of all, we're not dealing with the fact that this could fail. So let's do that first. So in, like I said, we're going to, um, all input for now, we're going to unwrap that. And in a second, we're going to fix that because if we leave that around, it's going to cause us all kinds of pain later, but we're going to do the dumbest possible thing. Oh, we read into a, oh, it's very weird that everyone does that. All right, so it's going to be, we're going to have a string like this. 
um, and we're going to read into all input like this. It's going to need to be mutable. And this one's also going to need to be mutable. I mean, if you're reading from something, you do change it as you read it, so that makes sense. Um, so now, now what, what we're doing is wrap, wrap our input in a buffered reader, um, read all of it into a string, and then assume it's an int, and stick it in a vec, and return it. So obviously this code's still pretty dumb, but now this goes back to being take in a string reference, take ownership, or rather, create an own string from it. Now this is fine. This actually is only useful for tests. So let's put it in our test code. Shields a bit weird now. Token, or maybe just because tokens are so simple, they don't have constructors, and it's fine. This, I mean, this is very easy to read. I, I, I get a bit twitchy about constructing things directly from their, um, their kind of guts like this. But in this case, like I think tokens are so far are really simple, so it's fine. Now, if we run the tests, our tests pass. So we're now able to pass a three or a four, and let's just try running it with some input. So if we pass in a three, it prints out, um, oh gosh, it prints out a three and then a new line. So things have not gone quite right. If we just pass it in a three, it prints out a three. And if we pass in a seven, it prints out a seven. And actually if we pass in 72, it prints out 72. So let's add a test for that case too. And like, I don't think so far, I don't feel like this is a video yet because like it doesn't do anything interesting yet, right? So, so what if we did something like this? <clears throat> that test should already pass. It does. All right, so we're able to pass uh, single character ints and multiple character ints. Now, in order for this to be, um, an interesting video. We need to be able to, sorry, I keep saying pause, I mean lex. We need to be able to lex something that is more interesting than as uh, every, like the whole input is one token. So um, I'm kind of scrapping around for what would be some valid Rust code that has two numbers next to each other. Like it would be nice, it would be very, really, really simple if we could just say, um, you know, 9765. Um, let's just change that to multi character, and then this will be multiple tokens, right? So this should produce two tokens, right? 97 and. Um, we shouldn't use reuse 97. Let's say 1765. Try, I try and in, introduce as much variety as I can into my tests so that we'll just catch some edge cases. I'm not going to use a leading zero now in case that, that might mean something in Rust, so I won't do that. But yeah, just keep on, I just keep on adjusting things um, for that reason. All right, so that failed because in, uh, currently our code just takes in um, everything and so it treats it as a single integer token. Um, I also want to think about white space at some point, and I want to think about errors. So let's, before we forget, let's add ourselves another test case, which is uh, lexing non UTF-8 is an error, right? So now we're going to say, right, well, I mean, Okay, that we'll do that in a minute because that's going to mean changing the the types of our. Whoops, that's not how you comment in Rust. How weird. Um, that's going to mean changing the type of our lex function, which is going to return a result instead of a an iterator, or maybe an iterator of result. We'll see. We'll see. So let's focus on whether we can make this test case pass, and then maybe this is going to be the next video. I don't know.
I want to keep these nice and short and tight. Um, all right, so we at some point I'm going to think about white space because we need. I would like a way of preserving the white space so that our error messages can be as good as possible. Um, yeah, so that might be what I've how I've seen this done before is that you preserve the entire input string for each file that you're um, lexing or parsing, and then you just remember like a token was at this point in the input string, and then you can, when you're printing nice pretty error messages, you can um, provide, they can use the, the actual input string that you're working with um, to make that, um, to make that error message look nice. The other thing that I was thinking of doing was like representing the white space as tokens uh, and keeping them around so that we can um, reconstruct the bits of source code that we are interested in. But, yeah, I'm not sure that's helpful. And I'm also beginning, to, like, if we're going to keep around the whole string, maybe Lex shouldn't take in a reader. Maybe Lex should take in a string, right? And then we can hold references to into that string. So that might be... Yeah. All right. Well, we're we're going to do one things one at, one thing at a time. We're not going to think about white space yet. And when we do error messages, that's when we're going to think about error messages. So yeah, that's definitely going to be another video because we're going to have to do some work on errors. All right. So let's just focus on getting these two things to work. So the structure of our Alexa is going to start to appear because um, we're going to do. We yeah, it's going to look. This was basically all hard coded. We got we read all our input into a string, and we don't want any of that. Instead, we want to read the first character. Um, which is going to be how do you get a a byte out of a reader? And there must be a, I don't want a byte. I want a character. So we could read. So I guess we could treat this buffered reader as, yeah, this is starting to feel like, like given that I know that I am going to want um, a whole string, I think I'm basically going to ask you, when, you're, when you want me to lex a file, read that whole file into memory and then lex it. I was thinking that we would do it without loading the whole file into memory, but given we want really nice error messages and it would have to be a very large source file for it to be a memory problem to do that. I think what I'm going to do, just for the moment, so I don't have to fix these interfaces yet, is I'm going to read all the input into a string like before, and then I'm going to ask for the first character um, of the string. So that is going to be, this should be all input, uh, and then just give me the first character. And then, we, based on that first character, we're going to decide what to do. And the first character could be uh, something that is the beginning of a number. So it could be 0 to 9. And then if so, we are going to lex a number. And it might have been integer. I guess for now, all we know about is integers, right? So... Um, what am I going to call this? I'm going to call it... I've been calling them int, so let's continue calling them int. And that is going to... We're going to need that number as well, so let's call it um, first digit, like this. And we're going to say, please lex the rest of an int. So I'm just going to... For now, I'm going to call that function int, and we'll see if we regret that. And we're going to need to pass in. So this all chars, it, it, we're going to have to get it out. So let's call it chars. It's going to be immutable. Um, iterator over all the characters. Like so. And we get the first character to do this match. And then we're going to pass the rest of the characters in. Are these things going to take in chars as the first argument, maybe? And it's going to take an immutable reference to Charles, I think. 
This should be Charles. Right, so we've got to write, um, no, hang on, what is happening here? Well, we'll think about uh, the rest of this function in a second. Uh, oh, it should be, okay, okay. Now, we have got to handle, how are we going to handle the fact that we might have finished? Um, I really wish we had a yield. Be so good. Um, I don't know if in nightly you can use yield. Anyway, um, all right. So for now, we'll bail out. So we'll just say we won't unwrap. We'll just say we're finished. So if, yeah, if we've got some, some, uh, no, no, it's not, it's not here. It's the next. So it should be, we we'll get the next character out. If we've got a next character, that's what this is. If let's um, char equals chars.next, then we do this stuff. Um, and so this should now be just char. Oh, it's not, we're going to call it ch, because char is a keyword. Now, that should be if let. That's looking okay, but we still need this int function, and then we need to figure out what we're going to return. But we'll get to that. So the the functions that do the lexing are going to be things like this, where we say um, we've been given an iterator over all the chars. Um, I guess it could be given we've been given a a reference to it, we can say it's a mutable reference to a iterator and we put in here to say we don't know the type of it but um, you don't need to generate copies of this thing for every different type we're just gonna uh, have a pointer to it so you uh, reference to it so you you don't need to know what type it is the type is char and also we've been given the first digit so we know it's a digit like this and we need to read in other characters in here. But also, what happens if it's not a digit? So, I guess if it's a space. Well, maybe we don't care about that. Let's just say for now, uh, for now, we'll just panic and then we'll figure out what to do about that later. Um, unexpected. Inputs. Um, ch. And again, our errors are going to get better soon. Uh, all right, so this int function needs to do something. Um, and we're going to, we're going to, we're returning an iterator, which is I'm not really handling properly here. What we really need to do is return some kind of um, struct that, that implements iterator. And when you call next on it, that's when it does this work. That's what's um, messy is up here. So I'm wondering, can I hack around this for now? And then sort that out soon. I think I can. Um, so we'll have let, can I? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have just a like output vector. Um, so we'll soon fix this, but for now, we're going to just have a vector and we're going to return it, um, by turning it into an iterator. And that's going to just like, it means, it kind of means that the whole thing of being an iterator was pointless, but, um, soon we'll fix it. All right. So, um, what this does is it gets the next character. So we've got, basically, we know it's an integer because it started with zero to nine. Uh, so let's get the next character by calling next. Um, if it was not, if there is no next character, then we're gonna return 
So this is going to return a token. And if there's nothing else, we're going to return a token int um, built just from that first character. So let's just imagine we get we're collecting some string here. Um, can we do string from a char? Maybe. Yeah, it looks happy. All right. So, we, so our return value so far is just the the digit we've already been given, and then we're going to go through, um, and I guess we're going to say while while we still got characters. Have a look at them. And if, like, how do you continue an integer? Well, you continue an integer with a, something like 0 to 9, right? So, I didn't look right. Um, so, if we got another digit, Then we add it to our return value. Uh, push next digit. So ret needs to be mutable. Yeah, we need to handle all the other cases. If it's not a digit, we're not in an integer. So we're going to break out of this thing. break out of this while loop and return what we've already got. And we've kind of thrown away that character, which is going to work well for us right now, I think, and then work badly for us very soon. But for now, it should make sense. So um, this should be, we should get hold of this token and then put it into ret. which means ret needs to be mutable. So just to go over the structure that we're slowly building up, come on, what's wrong? Oh, I need a semicolon. Um, so to go over the structure that we're slowly building up, basically loop through all the input that we've been given and um, look at the first character of our input. Well, it's like, let's say the next character of our input because this is gonna, uh, it doesn't yet, but at some point this is going to be a loop. So maybe this should be a while let as well. So loop through this this input we've been given. Get a character out of it. If we get a character that looks like it's going to be an int, and so later this is going to look like it's going to be a number, right? Because things other than ints start with these things. But for now, we only know about ints. So if we get a character that looks like an int, then drain some more characters out of this chars until you've got a token. Give us back the token, and then we will put it into, for now, put it into our return vector, and then keep looking for more characters. And what this int thing does is drains the characters, gets the next digit out. If it's another 0 to 9, well then we're still, we're still in an integer, so push that into our return value. And eventually we return the answer. So with any luck, this will pass our test. Uh, it looks like it did, except I made a mistake in the test. Yeah, should be 65. All right, so that feels like, nope, I failed. Um, how? Oh, hold on. <laughs> this is not an inclusive range. So nine. So it's a good thing I varied my input, you see. Because one of my numbers started with a nine, and that was not actually being covered. So, all right, so now we have passing tests. Okay, so uh, that's our first video. We have a, a little Lexa. Let's, let's send some stuff to it. We have a little Lexa, which can take a 17, a 96, and a 400... Or for many numbers, and it it lexes it to say 
instead of just being given a, a set of char plain characters, we've, we've got we've got tokens, which later we're gonna um, use to identify like the structure of our program. But yeah, the first part of identifying the structure of our program is just break it up into separate tokens. And we got really lucky the way we're handling white space here that those white space characters got swallowed and it was that was okay that won't always be okay so we're going to do better there and just go over the code one more time so essentially the structure of the lexing code is um, match on the first thing and then go into a function that that knows oh it that can handle anything that starts with that first thing in our case we only handle integers so it's okay and then in, inside here we continue reading that thing until we get to the end of it and then we break and stop and return what we've got um, and then so where this is going to get cleverer is we're going to have functions that don't know yet whether this is an integer or a floating point or, or other stuff like that so instead of being in it might be called like number or int or float or you know something like that um, and then once it's figured out which it is at that point it's going to um, branch out to another function and so on so um, let me know what you think of this series are you interested in uh, uh, us developing milk together um, I hope it'll be fun. Uh, and if you enjoy it, I'll see you next time.